nobody wants to uh, face the fact that they've been dead wrong their whole lives about something very basic like money you know the uh Uh, we used to say software is eating the world, you know, and, and the iPhone has 30 different devices or more that you used to carry around and it's all in one iPhone. Uh, this is uh, Bitcoin, you know, it's eating value around the world, whether it's cash, stocks, bonds, commodities, it's all going to end up in Bitcoin. And that's the big trend, you know, that's just been true since day one and it'll be true for the next 10 years. The kind of overall mission of Bitcoin over the years has changed somewhat. It became less about the medium of exchange. People kind of ratcheted it all back and say, wait a minute, let's talk about Bitcoin as store of value and get that story straight first, that it's synthetic, digital, absolutely scarce commodity and it's money and it's perfect money. And let's, let's figure that, let's get that figured out and well-established first. And uh, this led to um, the whole confrontation in 2017, the block size wars and the New York agreement. And you had the showdown between those who were looking for bigger blocks and that there should be more transactions and there's competition with Visa and MasterCard. And that's what Bitcoin's all about. Uh, they failed against the nodes and the nodes are securing the network and the network secures money. <clears throat> so then flash forward to Bitcoin 2022 and Jack Mahler's is talking about being able to go into the store and use Bitcoin as a medium of exchange using the Lightning Network to, to you uh, with the daily just cut with NCR National Cash Register. So there's kind of a full circle here, you know, that I've that I've being in this for 11 years now. I've, I'm, I'm observing how this has all come back um, as far as uh, the, the 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 feeling back in 2011 was very much um, that this was coming out of the cypherpunk movement. And, you know, um, it attracted it attracted both the freedom movement, you know, the uh, privacy movement and the encryption movement and the Phil Zimmerman type cypherpunks that were looking for um, security and privacy. And it, it also attracted, I mean, we have lived in this industry for years now with what we popularly popularly call grifters you know this is this industry like all financial industries attracts grifters and i and i saw it at bitcoin 2022 i mean a lot of you have a lot of people showing up saying i love bitcoin you know and then when you get talking to them they're pushing a shit coin what 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 i i call the michael saylor era which started about two years ago was really a step up you know it was really it was really the beginning of bitcoin as a serious professional industry, I would say. And so that was, so for eight years though, it was, you had a lot of shit going on. Michael Saylor kind of kicked off a, a new era. I call it the Michael Saylor era that we're in now. And um, I think the next the next step is gonna be, it might, might be the Janet Yellen era because Janet Yellen just came out with a statement that was very, you know, constructive about Bitcoin and talking about it in, in a way that shows that she actually kind of understands it. So now this might be the new the new era where we're the sovereign on the sovereign level where banks start to really accumulate Bitcoin and start mining Bitcoin as a strategic reserve. So that could be the story of the next 12 months. Well, Simon and I going back to 2013, we started Bitcoin Capital one, two and three, which was really the first VC fund in in Bitcoin, and uh, at that time the focus was on exchanges. Uh, you know my background is is really with exchanges. Um, Simon had launched a, a platform uh, which which um, was able to kind of prove uh, proof of concept, if you will. And so we ended up buying into Kraken at the seed round, and Bitso, and Bitfinex, and 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 the exchange business is really one there's only two businesses that have come out of this industry and that's the exchange business and the mining industry and so the exchanges have done done really well and so now in 2022 with elzante capital 
It's uh, really focusing on hyper Bitcoinization. So anything that takes us closer to creating a circular economy, like we saw in El Zante, in El Salvador, the people there are living or getting toward living on a Bitcoin standard where they're paid in Bitcoin, they're spending Bitcoin, they're saving in Bitcoin, and they're completely divorced from the IMF and the World Bank and all the colonial interests that come from up north in the U.S. And other countries in the region are quickly figuring out that this is a fantastic thing. You would definitely need more education. Uh, so anything in ed tech is like, you know, education technology uh, would, would definitely be looking at it. But I'm also discovering, you know, on the ground what's happening. Uh, so uh, we're we're in El, San, we're in El Salvador uh, quite often. And so we're just out there actually, you know, kicking the tires, talking to people and finding out on the ground, you know, what what people are doing um, and, and just finding out where the, the momentum and the, and the energy is. And um, and and going that way one one company that we're already de in, involved with would be uh, jan3 which is samson mo's new company you know he left blockstream and he's starting a company in el salvador it's called jan3 and uh he's all about spreading uh bitcoin uh, sovereign uh legal tender to different countries and all the infrastructure that goes with that so um that's that's already pretty much earmarked to be in the fund um so that's where we're at well once again you know michael saylor is kind of leading the way right he just did a deal with um um what's the name of the bank um silvergate silvergate, silvergate yeah. and uh so he put up some bitcoin and borrowed 200 million to buy more bitcoin and um I, I i was talking to some folks at the conference i believe he paid five five and a quarter percent for that, which is a leaden is a service. Uh, I think that they are, uh, it's a 7.9% is, um, the interest that they're charging folks to, 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 uh, borrow against their Bitcoin. I, I talked to Adam as well at the conference and, uh, I, I looked into leaden. It looks, it looks pretty good. Um, 100%. but as you say, as you say, um, you know, you can get rug pulled on the volatility without having a, a longer term um instrument so um that would that would be helpful but um clearly you know it's uh not it, it have this pristine asset so if you can borrow against it then you don't get the tax liability and, and for a lot of us you know our cost basis you know is in the single digits so <laughs> clearly you know I don't, if you're selling at any at forty thousand, that's uh quite a quite a tax hit banks have become official custodians of their Bitcoin. So the, all the, the infrastructure of the banking is coming to Bitcoin. It allows for them to offer <clears throat> traditional types of products. And there will be competition uh, amongst these banks. And, and so, you know, interest uh, could, could come down, uh, should come down. And uh, the power is shifting from the fiat money world to the Bitcoin world. And the Bitcoiners are starting to have a lot of political clout in Washington. Uh, they're having political clout in different countries around the world. Um, they're having clout within corporations that are you know, pushing for greater Bitcoin exposure on the balance sheet. So Bitcoin is becoming, as we've often said, it's becoming it, it's such a perfect asset and such a such perfect money. And it's so in, indisputably perfect that its path toward um, this type of domination of the financial world was inevitable as everybody says and uh, and and so now we're seeing that play out you know innovation creates demand and creates um all kinds of momentum economically and uh, we've seen this in many industries you know um but with bitcoin because you bring innovation to money actually the first response anyone has is to throw up because you you're taking something that they hold dear to their psyche in their consciousness and you're saying that's wrong everything you've thought about money is actually wrong and nobody wants to accept that nobody wants to deal with that so very from the very beginning um when you keep telling people you're wrong uh the response is well you're toxic you're you're toxic you're a maximalist you know that that's what people respond because they're being told that they're wrong <laughs> you know over and over again 
Uh, and so it's hard to be on the side of a Bitcoin, you know, believer because you're you're getting you're you're having to. It's like being an exorcist. You know, you show up in the middle of the night, and Linda Blair is on the bed, trapped in a fiat money devil, and, and you're trying to get her to you know come to Jesus, come to Satoshi, and they're projectile vomiting everywhere. You know, we were I was I had tour de Meester on my show in 2014. And we were trying to spitball who would be the first country to adopt Bitcoin. Uh, we mentioned a few names. We didn't mention El Salvador, but we thought it would be a smaller country, an agile country, a country that needed uh, its own money that was being abused by the dollar system. Uh, I also had Trace Mayer on, if anyone remembers Trace Mayer. Uh, we talked uh, several times about Bitcoin on the sovereign level. So there was, uh, we've just been waiting for the country to come along and say, hey, we're going to make Bitcoin legal tender. And, uh, El, 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 El Salvador was that country, I, I primarily from the work of Jack Mahler's and the strike lightning wallet, you know, and El Zante, it gravitated up to the president's office and the rest is history. And um, it's um, it, it's the IMF clearly is not doesn't like this. And uh, we just had a story this past week uh, where Bitcoiners are were in the New York Post. They had a story that well, Bitcoiners are basically psychopaths, and the Bitcoin is basically evil. I, again, I return to my. To, this is the whole history, you know, as the exorcism that we we that that we've lived for 12 years, having to deal with this uh, denial by the vast majority of the population who do not want to reconsider or consider that everything they have believed about money is false even the gold bugs you know gold bugs who you would think would be more sympathetic to bitcoin they most of them are also hate bitcoin because it challenges everything they believe about gold so to be you know you end up being if you're a bitcoin maximalist you know you're a hated figure because nobody wants to face the fact that they've been dead wrong their whole lives about something very basic like money you know the uh the humans are, are are basically just food and sex you know the primary drivers and 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 behind that is money and so when you destroy that model um you know no one's going to pat you on the back and say thank you for crushing my worldview thank you for destroying the paradigms of, uh, uh, upon which i've based my entire existence no they're going to hate you for that but it doesn't change the fact that bitcoin's on this unstoppable path unstoppable vector and the, the, what we say is you know you don't change bitcoin bitcoin changes you just you know let it let it happen you know you you've been wrong your whole life but it doesn't mean that you can't start to be right about what's happening